something on it. Press the OK button. Just press the OK button. One or nine is our next hymn. Marvelous Grace. Number ten. Okay. <laughs> One or nine. Marvelous Grace of our loving Lord. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount at point, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse. Will pass. 
in the session number 10 number 10 
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Pleasure to, to be in the house of God, to wash all of you, to see you in the presence of God. Of God. Our, God Our God is faithful, faithful is, is loving, loving is, is kind, kind is merciful. And it's such, and it's a, such joy a joy to come and worship Him together, to see, see you all back, back in the house of God. Now numbers are increasing a little bit. And we're very happy and glad for that. You're all, all brave, brave and, and this, is this is the new normal that we, that we come to worship and spend, and spend time in the, in the house of God. Welcome, Welcome in, your in your father's house. Come, come and worship, worship and feel, and feel at home in the presence, the presence of God. Our God, our God who is loving, our God, God who is faithful, our God who sees everything, everything that we do. He wants, he wants to know that you are happy and he, and he cares for you and thinks about you all the time. All the time. No, no moment that God, God doesn't, doesn't think and, and love, love you and cares for you. So, so this, this morning, morning we, just we just want to welcome you in the house of God. Feel, feel at home. home. And like, and like they say in part, part of Africa where I come from, welcome, welcome and welcome, and welcome again. again. If you've been, if you've been to Kenya or Tanzania, we say that, we say that all the time. You're most, You're most welcome, welcome to the house of God. I want, I want to welcome each, each and everybody here today. Feel that you're in the presence of your Lord. Feel that you that come, come to worship, worship with, with your father, with your daddy, with your daddy where, where you are safe. safe. Yes, a safe yes, place to be, to be, to be, to be in, the in the house of God today. I see, I see very, very many people who, who are visitors, are visitors or have been worshiping here before, before and have come back to spend, to spend time in the house, in the house of God. Of God. Um, um, I have, I have a, a, long a long list on my, my book, here, book here that I've been given, and I've called, called the, names the names of the people whose names, whose names have been written down and are here, and here to worship with us as visitors. Um, um, Steve Brown, Steve Brown from Greenwich. Would you please, please stand? And keep and standing, standing please. Um, 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 Simon, Simon um, Richardson. Please stand. Please stand. Thank you. Um, um, Afi, Afi Smith, Smith from Croydon. Would you please stand? Please stand. Thank you. Um, um, Jovan, Jovan Alexander, Alexander from Walthamstow. Thank you Thank very much. This is from London. And then we, and then have, we have Abigail, Abigail uh, Williams, Williams Patterson from Huddersfield. Please get that. Thank you. Um, um, Jindai, Jindai Heron from, from Canada, Canada, I believe. Welcome. Welcome. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Myron Evans from Birmingham. Could you please get that? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm <laughs> um, Haley Brown, Brown from Wakefield. Please stand. Please stand. Thank you very much. Um, Jackie, Jackie Penny, Penny Cook from Leeds. Would you please stand? Okay. Jenny Hansen. Would you please stand? Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Um, um, uh, Joanna, Joanna Zamora. Zamora. Espana. Espana. Please stand. Please stand. Thank you very much. You must be someone out there. All right. Can I can't see you, but you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, uh, Banga Attila from River Way Church. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. And we got, got Corinne Benjamin, Benjamin from Leeds. From Leeds. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. We are, we are so, so glad, glad that you could be here today. God, God bless, bless you, God keep you, keep you, you God protect, protect you, and, and please, please come, come to Leeds anytime time you're around here. Make this your home church. Home church. We are happy, we are happy that, that you come to worship with us. God bless you and keep you. Thank you very much. It was such it was a joy, such a joy to, see to see the young, the young people, people leading the song, the song service, service this morning. Um, um, I'd like, I'd to, like see to see more young, more young people, people doing that more and more. And more. Because, because this is the church, church. And, when and, and when I see young people involved, I know the church is growing. It's alive. It's alive. And it keeps keep growing, growing strong. strong. When, when I'm not here, the church is somebody doing it. And I praise God for that. Thank you so much, young people. Let's keep worshiping and and spending, and spending time, time in the presence of God. I'm happy. I'm happy. We're very We're happy, happy to see the entire family. And your son is here. Welcome. Good to see you. You're not here last summer when you introduced the family. We're very, very happy that you're all here. Let's bless you and keep you and cover you. Somebody else that we haven't introduced yet. Please stand. Please stand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Can you, can you see somebody who is a regular visitor and sitting next to you? And you can mention them to help me out? Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're, you're almost, almost welcome. Oh, oh okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. The real, the real, the real, the real family, family is here. Um, um, 
I'm um, um, Mr. Rita, 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 Rita son, and, uh, and uh, Sister uh, Joyce. Joy. Who is, who is, who is the, center? the center? Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. You're most, you're most welcome. welcome. Oh, oh, that's oh, your wife. Thank, thank, thank you very much. much. Good, 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 good to see small. you all. I'm, 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 the Rita family buried their mother this week, and we just, and we just praise, praise, praise God for the for beautiful, beautiful service, service that, that was held. And pray, and pray that, that God, God will protect you, you, God will cover you, God will put a hand around you, and have mercy on you. And have, you. And have and hope, hope that one of these days you're going to see, see our mother again. Our mother, mother is always special, especially if she's 105 years old. She brought you to this world. Thank you, and we praise God for that. Yes, yes. Well, welcome, welcome Mark. Good, good to see you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. We are happy, happy to have you here with us. All right. All right. Somebody, Somebody else? Thank, Thank you. It's a joy, it's a joy to be in the house of God. God, God bless, bless you all. And keep, keep you. And enjoy, and enjoy your worship and the time we spend together. together. And, and we see you in your holiness. And just, and just enjoy being in his presence. I have a, I have a few announcements to make here. Let me open this little gadget here. Um, I've got several announcements to make. One, that we need volunteers for the Soup and More Food Bank. If you'd like to help Sis Jackie and her team in the food bank, please, you're most welcome um, uh, to help Sis Jackie or Sis uh, Matheson. They're the leaders there. Then we also have our prayer meeting every Wednesday. Um, there's a prayer ministry department is inviting individuals to be part of the team. Contact Sis um, uh, Emily Tebbs or Gutu. And the prayer ministry has, is studying the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Adventist Church. Every, every Wednesday, we have a worship service for children starting from 6.20 to 6.55. This is on Zoom. And then for the adults from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. You are most welcome to join us and worship with us. It's been a blessing so far, and we have large numbers of our members attending. To know the temperature of a church is to see how many people come to the midweek worship. So we want to see more and more of you, so we can just spend time praying together and allowing God to be in control of our lives. Another announcement we have here is um, Pathfinders. But Pathfinders baptismal class will be continuing on Zoom. For more information, please see um, uh, the poster that will be circulated or speak to Elder Romaine Watson or Sister Eunessa Watson. Okay? Um, Health Ministries has got an, an announcement. Health Day will be held on Saturday, 26th March. That looks like this has been passed, sorry. And then there's an announcement here from the youth ministries. Ella Ngobile would like to meet with all the young adult, youth, and students next week, March 5, after lunch. So please make sure you stay for lunch next Sabbath on 5th of March. And this will be regarding restarting Adventist youth events and AOI services. So please stay for the meeting next week, um, 5th of March. Youth, please meet Ella Ngobile to be able to make arrangements for this. Um, we also have an announcement here from the church. We have a business meeting next week on the 5th March at 5 p.m. here in the church. Business meeting, so please plan to attend so we can be able to inform and pass um, on things. And uh, we also have a fast reading for some offices that the church has uh, put together. I'll ask one of the clerks to come and help as in reading it. This will be the first reading. Then we can be able to do the second reading next Sabbath and vote. I'll come down and be with you. This, okay, this one's all right. So the first reading for the um, officers, the church officers, to serve us for the next two years. The first one is the community service leader, which will be Debbie Pippa. Um, the DBS clerk will be Trevon Peters. And the third one will be the responsible person, Elder Adonai Nkomo. So this is the first reading.
a fast reading, so the second reading will be next week, then we can be able to vote for it. And now I'll ask this faith to come and make me an announcement for women's ministry next time. This is not rehearsed, so I'd like you to come. Come, Simon. Don't worry, you're not doing anything you wouldn't be able to do. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, as we know, next week is the International Women's Day of Prayer. OK, so what will be happening on that day? Well, it is a special day mm -hmm. because it is a time to pray and it is a women's international day. So women around the whole world will be praying on this day in the Seventh Day Adventist sphere. It's going to be starting at nine o'clock in the morning. And um, for the ladies, we're asking if you could wear something with purple, signifying um, royalty. Thank you. That word just went out of my head. And um, we will have a time to pray as individuals, a time to pray as groups. And we'll have something about what women's ministries is. Because some people don't really know what mi women's ministry is all about. So we will be talking about that in our Sabbath school and looking at Dorcas Federation. What do you think we should do to prepare for this day? Oh, I was just about to ask you that, actually. Thank you. Oh, you know, <laughs> um, as all of us as a church, let us pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us that this day will have an impact on each of our lives. Another thing they could do is bring a friend, a woman who is from your community or your neighbor to come and pray with us because prayer is free, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much, Simone. No I hope you'll all be with us next Sabbath. Thank you. The men are invited. <laughs> thank you thank very you much. much. We're all invited, invited to the, to the women's women ministry next Sunday. Another announcement that I forgot to mention is that uh, on our, on our information, information page from the church, from the church we have, we have link a link tree. tree. There's a link, There's a link tree. tree. We like we to like encourage you to use, use, use it. Open, open it. it. And all and the kind of sent for information is there now. The programs, the programs and everything is there. We don't, we send, don't send them like we used to do before. So just, so just click on the link tree and open, and open it, it and get and all the information, the information that you, that you like, like, like to get there. Um, today, um, today, on the, on the platform, platform, we have the people. people. We have, we have uh, <laughs> Elder, Elder Brother Ron, Ron, Ron um, um, Tatis is going to do, do the, the, the guided prayer. prayer. Um, um, I am, am Patrick 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 the chair of the platform today. today. Um, um, uh, Sister Emily Sister Emily Sister Emily Sister Sister will be speaking to us, to us and the scripture, and the scripture reading, reading read, read by Brother James Lewande. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him to come later when it's time for him to do that. Okay? Um, now we'll go to, on to our opening song, number 73, I believe. Number, opening song, number 73. Holy... Holy, holy. Shall we all rise for our opening hymn? Holy.
Miles of Painstein to lead out in the prayer song. Let us all kneel for prayer.
dear Father. We are able to come here and pray to you on this Sabbath day. In Ukraine, dear Lord, people are running away from churches. People are running to hide. People are trying to protect themselves, dear Lord. Children are being separated from parents, husbands from wives, dear Father. They are not able to keep your Sabbath holy and pray to you as we do, dear Lord. Please send your holy angels to protect and guard and, and, and help those people who are suffering in Ukraine, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, these are times, dear Lord, you know, COVID-19 and also this war in Ukraine and what's going on in Russia. Dear Lord, this is fulfillment of prophecy, you know, wars and rumors of wars, dear Father. Help us, dear Lord, that it will bring us closer to you and recognize that this world is coming to an end and that these are times that we need to make right with you, dear Father. And finally, dear Lord, I pray for Sister Emily Tebbs Ogutu, who is going to break the word to us today, dear Father. Please send your Holy Spirit to be with her and to speak through her, dear Lord. Dear Father, there are many great women in the Bible, dear Lord, who have spread your word, who have prophesied in your name, dear Father. Heavenly Father, be with Sister Ogutu as she does this today, and that we will reap the benefits of your Holy Spirit and your word through through what she presents to us today. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Belongs, belongs to him. him. We, are we are stewards. stewards. We, are we are in God's, God's business. business. And God, and God owns, owns this business, business and tells us, I have, I have invested, invested this, this in this in business. This business. I've put my finances, I've put everything, everything in it. And all, and all I want from you <coughs> is to bring back 10% of profit. Keep that. Keep keep that. that. So God, so God is saying, keep it keep all. And just bring 10%. A little, a little bit, bit of offer to keep, keep my work going. That's all, That's all God, God is asking us to do. Okay. Um, um, you can you see, see the report reports given by, given by the treasurers, treasurers on, the on the screen. But before, but before we, we go to, go to collecting, collecting our offerings, I'll ask, I'll ask the deacons, the deacons and the next time come to come the front. front. Deacons, deacons and deaconesses, this time, time wherever you are. And I'm, and going, I'm to going to read a text, a text here, here and pray. And you can go on, go on and read um, and um, collect, collect it as Sister Tasha and Tim team, team, team play, play for us. us. Okay? okay. So, so I'm, I'm going, going to read from the book of um, Fast, Fast Kings, Kings, chapter, chapter 17. 17. Fast, 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 Fast Kings, Kings chapter, chapter 17, Fast, Fast 14. And it and says, For us, says the Lord of all of Israel. The bean of flour shall, shall not be used, be used up, nor shall, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. The flour shall not be used up, the jar will ro not run dry, until the Lord sends the rain on earth. We will never be empty, because the Lord promises that he will always provide for us. I'll pray now as the deacons and deaconesses go out. Shall we bow our heads? Father God, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for pouring your Holy Spirit in this house in the, of worship today, Lord, that people will return to you their tithes and offerings, that it may be used to serve you. We thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we may go ahead. Natasha, you, it's your turn.
Shall we stand? Bring you all tithes and offerings and of the household. Let's pray. Father God, God, we thank you. We praise, we praise you. We thank, we thank you for the honor of the in your household, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord, for the offerings and tithes that have been brought to your house. We pray that you bless, bless it, that it be used to bring honor and glory to your name. That be used to spread the word all over the world, world and more people, more people will be reached. reached. So that so that second, second time, time. <coughs> closer, closer and closer. And closer. We, thank we thank you for, you for hearing us. us. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. And now we're we ready for the children's story on a video. Hello everyone, it's Aunt Fernita, and we're studying Lesson 9, For All People. The message for this week is, I worship God with my worldwide church family. The memory verse is from Revelation chapter 15, verse 4. All nations will come and worship before you. Have you ever had a special guest? come to your church? Was that person a well-known preacher or singer? The Israelites invited an extra special guest to their new church, God. He even promised to live in their temple. Solomon's eyes sparkled. It was finished. All the furniture was in the right place. Every detail was complete. It was time now to dedicate the temple to the Lord. Solomon called the leaders of all the tribes and families of Israel to come to Jerusalem. The first part of the dedication involved bringing the ark to its new home in the temple. Everyone watched as the priests, they carried it slowly with great respect and joy to the temple. King Solomon and the people sacrificed sheep and oxen along the way. In their joy, they sacrificed so many sheep and oxen to the Lord that no one could keep count. The priests carried the ark containing the law of God into the most holy place of the temple. They set it carefully beneath the wings of the two great carved golden-covered angels. Then all the Levites, who were musicians, stood near the altar playing their instruments, cymbals and harps and lyres. The musicians sang and played loudly and powerfully together. They praised and thanked the Lord. He is so good, they sang. His faithful love endures forever. At that moment, the most amazing thing happened. A great cloud filled the temple. The cloud held the glorious presence of the Lord. The priests could not continue their work. They had to leave the temple because of God's glory. Solomon saw the cloud and his heart swelled with thankfulness. The temple was finished and the Lord had moved in. He turned around and looked at all the Israelites standing before him. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, he shouted. Then Solomon knelt down. He lifted his hands toward heaven in front of all the people. He began to pray. O oh Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven or earth. You keep your promises and show unfailing love to all who obey you. May you watch over this temple both day and night. 
May you always hear the prayers I make towards this place. If your people are ever defeated by their enemies because they have sinned against you, and if they turn to you and call on your name and pray to you here in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive their sins. Forgive your people who have sinned against you, for they are your people, your special possession, whom you brought out of Egypt. When Solomon finished praying, he stood up and shouted a blessing over all the people of Israel. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he give us the desire to obey his commands. May people all over the earth know that the Lord is God. Then the king and all the children of Israel offered sacrifices to the Lord. Solomon and the Israelites celebrated together for 14 days. No one would ever forget it. They would tell it over and over again. Finally, someone would write down the story so people could read it forever. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. Post produced. Scripture reading today is going to be Dan, 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 Dan by Brother, Brother James Lee. <laughs> and after that, that, we'll have a mission by Ben. ben. So, thank you. Brother Liwande. Happy Sabbath, Church. Today I'm going to be reading Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you create all for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Amen. May our good Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. <laughs> Where every stalk on earth 
the quill and every man is scribe by trade to write above the love of God would drain the oceans dry nor could the scroll contain the whole those stretch from sky to sky the love of God how rich and pure how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels Love of God. Thank you, Verna. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love that reaches from sky to sky. We thank you for your mercies that is deeper than an ocean and higher than the sky. We thank you, O Lord, for your patience that our human mind cannot comprehend. We thank you for your blessings. Blessings way beyond what we deserve. But mighty God, we come to worship you. We come to adore you. We come to recognize that you are God. So we glorify your name, O oh Father. We give you the honor for the purpose for which we congregate in this place. Father, we did not congregate because of the building like the temple during the King Solomon time, where the Chakana glory rests upon it. But we congregate because the presence of the Chakana glory is among us, and we come to visit you, O Lord. We come to worship you and recognize the purpose for which we came to church. Dear Father, O Lord, may silence be set upon your people, and may our hearts be tuned up to heaven that our lives will connect with your Holy Spirit so we can hear your voice to speak to each one of our hearts. So we can experience you in a way we have never experienced you before. And that, O oh Father, as we give you admiration, praise, honor, and glory, you will accept our praise, O oh Lord, and show mercy upon the children of man. And may we find grace in your sight. For your grace is not free. Your son paid the price for that grace. Glorify yourself now, O oh Lord. Empty me of self. Father, remove all nerves from me because this is a topic I was so afraid to talk about. But Father, you convicted me that it has to be said. So help me, Lord. Because I am equally guilty of all that I am going to talk about. So please, Lord, show us, remove noise from our presence. Give us focusedness of mind. Calm the hearts and the confusion of the little ones. And may your spirit move among your people so you can receive the glory. For we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The sacredness of worship. I would like to thank James for reading the scripture for me. Thank you, Papa. And it's from Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. The sacredness of worship. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne 
and worship him that liveth forever and ever. And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Sometimes when we have titles of sermon, we need to understand what the title means, the sacredness of worship. What does the word sacred mean? I look up in a couple of dictionaries, and some said it's biblical meaning, so we're going to use some of them. It said the sacredness, the word sacred means is to set apart dedicated especially to God, made holy, proceeding from God, is entitled to respect and veneration, devoted, devoid of destruction, is not liable to punishment. It opposes circular. The Webster Dictionary said, it's a dedicated or set apart for the service and worship of a deity, devoted exclusively to one service and use. Worthy of religious veneration is holy, entitled to reverence and respect. Related to religion, it said it's not circular, opposed to circular. The Calling English Dictionary defines sacred mean excludes devotion to the deity or to some religious ceremony or people. Worthy or regarded, or regarded with reverence. In other, In other words, words it's saying sacred would, would not be intelligible not in the natural ontological ontological worldview. Basically, it's saying that when you compare the worldview of our world and the moral commitment of Christianity or religion, it's inconsistent. There is no consistency between sacred and circularism. They don't work. What does the word worship mean? To honor, to show reverence has a divine, to a divine being or supernatural power. The word worship means to regard with great extravagant respect and honor and devotion. It can also be given to celebrities, to leaders, but in the presence of God, it's strictly for God. The Webster Dictionary says worship is reverence offered to a divine being, a supernatural power, the act of express, expressing such reverence to that person. To render religious reverence and homage to a being. I, because we are talking about the sacredness of worship in a holy convocation, we need to understand the first time worship was mentioned in the Bible. And the first time worship was recorded in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 4. And I read from verses 3 to 7. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstling of the flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord respected or respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. You know, God is a God of order. 
in Sabbath school, we're talking about the different types of sacrifices, and I didn't even know it was going to come in my sermon. The sacrifice of sin requires blood, and the sacrifice of thanksgiving requires the grain of hope. Do you remember that in Sabbath school? So I read verse um, 5 again. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thy worth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thy does well, thou shall, shall not die be accepted. And if thy shall, does not well, sin lieth at thy door. And unto thee shall he have his desire, but you shall rule over it. We need to understand the background of Cain and Abel worship for us to appreciate why God rejected Cain's offering. And they were worshiping God, by the way. In Patriarch and Prophet, pages 7, 71 to 72, I will read. These brothers were tested, as Adam had been tested. Adam was Cain and Abel's father, Adam and Eve. So these brothers were tested, as Adam had been tested before them, to prove whether they would believe and obey the word of God. They were acquainted with the provision made for the salvation of man and understood the system of offerings which God had ordained. They knew that in these offerings they were to express faith in the Savior whom the offering typified and at the same time acknowledge their total dependency on him for their pardon. And they knew that by conforming to the divine plan for their redemption, the divine plan is the blood of a lamb. For their redemption, they were giving proof of their obedience to the will of God. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. And they were to show their faith in the blood of Christ has the promised atonement by offering of the firstling of the flock in sacrifice. Beside this, the first fruits of the earth was to be presented before the Lord as a thank you offering. So far as birth and religion, religious instructions were concerned, these brothers were equal. Both of them were sinners, and both acknowledged the claim of God to reverence and worship. To outward appearance of their religion, they were the same up to a certain point. But beyond this point, the difference between the two were great. Cain had the same opportunity of learning and accepting this truth as Abel. He was not a victim of arbitrary purpose. One brother was not elected to be rejected. No. Abel chose faith and obedience, and Cain, unbelief and rebellion. Here, the whole matter rests. Cain and Abel represent two classes of people that will exist in the world till the close of time. One class avail, avail themselves of the appointed sacrifice for sin and the other venture to depend on their own merits. There is a sacrifice without, without the virtue of transgression can be pardoned. Those who feel no need of the blood of Christ, who feel that without divine grace, they can by their own works secure the approval of God are making the same mistake as did Cain. If they do not accept the cleansing blood, they are, under, they are under condemnation. There is no other provision made whereby they can be released from the tumult of sin. 
And, she, and Ellen G. Wright wrote in testimony to the church, the last paragraph, and she said, if you choose to throw off the sacred, if you chose to throw off the sacred, restraining influence of the truth, Satan will lead you captive at his will. You will be in danger of giving scope to your appetites and your passion, giving loose rein to your lust, to evil and abominable desires. Instead of bearing in your continence a calm serenity under trials and affliction, like faithful Enoch, having your face radiant with the hope and that peace which passes understanding, you will stamp your continence with carnal thoughts, with lustful desire. You will bear the impression of satanic instead of the divine. Is there any other worship experience in the Old Testament that we can learn from? Let's look at another one. And this one, the prophet Ezekiel, God himself called his attention to the type of worship he was receiving. And in Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 15 to 17, it goes like this. Then he, he mean God, speaking to the prophet Ezekiel. Then he, God, said to me, Ezekiel, have you seen this, O son of man? Turn again and look, and you, will, and you will see greater abomination than these. Verse 16. So he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And there, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. And they were worshiping the sun towards the east. And God said to the prophet, and he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they have committed here? For they have filled the land with violence. Then they have returned to provoke me, God, to anger. Indeed, they have put the branch to their nose. In the book of, um, in the book of um, um, As Isaiah chapter 59, the prophet says this, 59, Verses 13 to 14. God, please give me wisdom. We have rebelled and tried to deceive the Lord. We have turned our back from following our God. We have stirred up oppression and rebellion. We tell lies and concord, which we concord in our minds. Justice is driven back. Godliness turned far off. Indeed, honesty stumble in the city square, and morality is not even able to enter. Is this the church? Is this the church of God? Where is the standard bearers in our churches? Now we are boast and we love to read, to speak about First Peter Chapter 2, verse 9, which the Lord in the New Testament say we are has the remnant church. And it said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you shall show forth the praises of God who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is the remnant church of God, the description. But what did Ellen G. White say in Christ's object lesson? Let's go there. In Christ's object lesson, pages 1 and 315 and 316, she says this. The professed followers, who are they? Us. The professed followers of Christ are no longer separate and peculiar people. 
The line of demarcation is indistinct. That means you can't even see the line. The people are subordinating themselves to the world, to its practices, its custom, its selfishness. The church has gone over to the world in transgression of the law. When the world should have come over to the church in obedience to the law. Daily the church is being converted to the world. All these, expect all these, including myself, expect to be saved by Christ's death. While they refuse to live his self-sacrificing life. They extol the riches of free grace. And attempt to cover themselves with an appearance of righteousness. Hoping to screen their defects of character. But their efforts will be of no avail in the day of God. We need to understand what it means. It's hard for me to talk about this. We need to understand what it means when we come into the house of God or into the presence of God to have that sacredness of worship. There are things we bring into God's presence that is common. And we mix the sacred with the common. And we become so desensitized, we think it's okay. So let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. Am I mixing the sacred with the common? Have we mixed the sacred with the common? Either consciously or unconsciously, what have we brought into the church? What customs of the world have we brought into God's church? Individually as Christians, what have I or you allowed from the world into the threshold of the church? How do we keep the common away from the secret things? Or do we even know what is common and what is sacred anymore? As people of God, when do we start separating the sacred from the common? And when do we say, enough, it's enough? Maybe we need to be taught what is sacredness when we worship God. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. And I beg your indulgence, because I read the whole chapter. It's just 11 chapters. We spend more time reading other things, and it doesn't stre stress us out because of time. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet, talking with me. We said, come up here and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was sat in heaven and on and, 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 and one sat on the throne, sorry, verse 3. And he that was sat was to look like a jepster, a, a sadier stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. Verses 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white garment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And on the throne proceeded lights and thundering and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Verse 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, 
And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Verse 7, and the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, and the four beasts had each one of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rested not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when this beast gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And for thy own pleasure, not my pleasure, for your own pleasure, they are and were created. This sin, this sin is an amazing sin with no distraction, no distraction whatsoever. The 24 elders, when they heard, holy, 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 they prostrated themselves in homage to Jesus Christ our Lord. Their, in, their entire focus was on Jesus, the Lamb of God. The 24 elders has the most reverence and in adoration, in worship to Jesus and God. There is no mixing the sacred with the common. There is nothing else that took their focus except the true worship to God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The word worship in Greek said procunus. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. It's written in Greek. And it said that when they talk about worship, they say to kiss like, a, lab, uh, like a, a dog licking his master's hand. I know it's way beyond us to think that way. It is to prostrate oneself in homage, to reverence and to adore. Think about it. When a dog licks the master's hand, he is showing admiration to his master. Licking his master's hand and looking into his master's eye, the master, the dog has a complete submission to the master. But we say, oh, we are too civilized. We are too polished. God wants natural and traditional worship. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's ask a couple of more questions. I'll soon finish. When we come into the presence of God, are we sensitive like this? Is there a sensitivity and humbleness like a dog who licks his master's hand? When we walk into church, do we have this reverence and admiration to the creator God to whom we come to worship? Do we have this urge to just prostrate ourselves in homage to God and our Lord Jesus Christ when we come near to worship him? Coming to this church is not the point. We came to worship God, not the building. So when we enter the house of God, are we conscious that he's there waiting for us? Are we so busy talking our own business? Is our focus on him only? 
or are we glorifying self and others in his, in his time and in his presence? God does not share his glory with others. Whether it be a pastor, the president of the general conference, whether it be the queen of England, God does not share his glory with anyone. Maybe the reason why the sacred and the common are being mixed in the Seventh-day Adventist church is because we have not, we have not the, the focus that the 24 elders have. We have lost primitive godliness. We are distracted with things and styles of this world. So by bringing the common into the church, we no longer reverend the things that are sacred the reason why the church has become as it is is because some of our spiritual leaders have suppressed the truth of worship and pushed out the worship of things that are holy and sacred to the point that we do not know what is sacred and what is not when we come to church to and when you go to prayer meetings or any holy convocation, we are treating the things of God and the things of God should be treated with reverence and respect. When we walk into the church, into this sacred convocation, we are bringing with us unclean tongues unclean hands and unclean devices into the assembly of God that are being used both for the common and therefore we do not know secretness. I'm going to touch on something that is very sensitive. Our cell phones, they are overused. We take our cell phones and when we want to keep our little one quiet, we pass the cell phone over to them. In a way, we're telling them that there is nothing sacred in the presence of God. We say our teenagers are sending messages about the program. But 99% of the time, they are not. And even we ourselves are not. We text each other. We look at things that we should not look at even outside of church. Then we use them for sacred purposes, which diminishes the value of sacredness. We wonder why our children leave the faith. Our children learn from what you do, not what you say. Our children learn from what we do, not what we say. They know us better than we know ourselves. I remember when I, my son was little, and we'll be going to church, and when we arrive, and some lady I really don't want to see at church, I said, okay, I say nothing. And he will look at me. I haven't said anything. Mommy, why did you make your eyes like that? I said, how did I make my eyes? He said, you made your eyes like that. I said, nothing wrong with making my eyes like that. Oh, you don't like that lady. I said, who told you that? He said, I know you. That's why we have to be very careful what we discuss in front of our children. We condemn the church in front of our children, and then we surprise our children leave the faith. Forgetting that we are condemning God and not the church. We are the one who have sent our children away, including me. And it hurts. It hurts. God will not give his glory to anyone. He is the blessed and only ruler, the king of kings and lords of lords. He alone is immortal and who lives in an unapproachable light. 
to him be honor and mighty forever. Amen. The Lord our God is worthy to receive glory and honor and power. He shouldn't beg us for it. His glory is such that even heaven's highest angels cannot look fully upon his face and yet mortal human belittle the presence of God. There is no boasting in the house of God. If we go to the book, Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 23, when Herod stood up and gave a speech and the people prostrated in front of Herod that this is the voice of God, the angel of God struck Herod and Herod was eaten up by worms and he died. I sometimes wish God can do that to us. We talk nonsense in the presence of God. We glorify man in the presence of God. We gossip in the presence of God. And yet we think God will continue to allow it. How long, Lord? How long? There is no boasting in the presence of God. It's his glory. It's his time. Give him the reverence. Isaiah 42 verse 8 said, God says, I am the Lord. That is, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praises to graving images. We have so many graving images in our lives. And yet we say we are waiting for the second coming of God. God's glory is his honor, slender and dignity. And he will not share it with anyone in telling the Israel of how he was going to spare them from destruction and give them new prophecies. It's not because they did better. They were still horrible, disobedient people. But God said this, for my own sake, my own sake, I will do this. How can I let myself be defamed? I will not yield my glory to another. When God is merciful to us, mere human beings, when the little few three hours to spend in his presence is too much for us to give, God will not defame himself, but we will be judged. So what is the purpose of coming to church? Why do Christians go to church and worship? is to simply remember God, to worship the God of creation in spirit and in truth. It's not in action. My spirit must connect with the Holy Spirit. My thought must be in tune with the good God. If it's not, I am not worshiping. I am committing abomination in the house of God in spirit and in truth, and to be thankful and give praises to God for the plan of salvation through the sacrifice of Christ who provided our salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, I am so guilty. I am so, so guilty. I have this whole week asking you for your forgiveness. Forgive me, Lord. I am not even worthy to give this message, for I'm equally sinful and guilty. So, Father, I bring myself and your people and all those who will ever hear this message that we should remember worship is not a place. Worship is not a style. Worship is not a system. Worship is humility. Worship is admiration to the creator God. Worship is prostrating, recognizing who you are. To come and allow us to just give you glory, honor, praise, and admiration. Father, oh Lord, help us to teach our children the difference between sacred and common. Or we will lose them to the world. Help, O oh Lord, teach us first how, what is sacred and what is holy and what is common and what is circular because they are not the same and they are not reconcilable. 
Please, God, have mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. sacredness in worship. Our closing song is number 8686, How Great Thou Art. Shall we stand? God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds and hands of made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Since my soul, my Savior, come to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then since my soul, my Savior, come to thee, how great thou art, how great.
sins my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. How great You are. How great You are. Glorify yourself, O oh Lord. You will receive honor, worship, admiration, and pray. praise. We glorify you, O oh God, for your endless mercies and patience towards man. We worship you, Father, with our hearts, our thoughts, our mind, and every fiber of our being. For you created us for your own pleasure. May we truly give you pleasure, O oh Lord. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. As the platform goes out, we shall make use of him 647. I've seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling on the vintage where the grapes of God are shot. I have lost the faithful lightning of his terrible truth. His truth is truth, he's marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, Glory, hallelujah, His truth is marching on. He has sounded for the trumpet that shall never go retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before His judgment seat. All these will my soul to answer Him, the jubilee and my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. This truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his voice, a mattress figures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. While God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, this truth is marching on. 530-530, when peace like a river. It is well with my soul. <laughs> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when so Pillows roll, whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. Well with my soul. 
sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. So it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, as the day when my face shall be sad, the clouds be rolled back as a Trump shall resign, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul.